Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, November 10th, 2022, and this is the week in charts. Obviously, we want to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. As I say each week, check my website, DaveLander.com, for a banner ad for the show. And you could also go directly to DaveLander.com slash webinar, and that link will be in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube. I'd love to have you attend live. We'd love to get some new people in. And feel free to bring your questions and your favorite stock picks. So what we talk about, well, obviously, as usual, current market conditions, your questions on trading, your favorite crypto and stock picks, just hang on to those until we get to the live charts or the respective markets. So what's our focus? Well, I tried something kind of novel. <laughs> Ask you guys, what do you want me to talk about? And then talk about it. It's like, wow, what an epiphany there. So got some questions, uh, the ports of persistency, Landry light -like pullbacks with some specific uh, markets in mind. And I initially woke up to talk, think, thinking I would talk about foresight and hindsight. And I do have some things to say about that. And I think that's something that can be fleshed out in a lot of detail in upcoming webinars. But I'll uh, we'll start that tonight. And I'm gonna show you something that a trader has never shown you. I think you're gonna be impressed or maybe not <laughs> so foresight and hindsight in this case is knowing that you're taking a mediocre setup and taking it anyway this claim screen as you know you could lose money trading or as often summing up boring a line from my buddy greg morris all predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can have between now and then okay uh, i did a little request for some input and you guys have been kind enough to do it i know there's one left over from last week that i didn't get to but i haven't forgotten about it so i think john was asking me can you talk more in depth about the let them fight it out decision and when you lean towards standing on the sidelines versus joining in for example i think you jumped in on gme that seemed like a good time to apply the let them fight it out no shit. <laughs> what factors would you put an emphasis on taking account to decide if a market or a specific stock was something to join in or let it let it be when we encounter a massive day like today or maybe a massive day like a single stock like GME. Okay, so let them fight it out. That's more of a saying based on the lack of stocks and meaningful setups, not so much individual stocks in and of themselves. Although with GME, yeah, I should have let them fight it out probably. And lately there just hasn't been a whole lot of meaningful setups. There's been few clean trends in sectors and the schizo, schizo nature of the market in general. That's one thing that I'll talk a little bit about in a few minutes, especially as it relates to the core methodology, all these things are related to core methodology. And another thing that I was looking at earlier, and it's something I've been talking about quite a bit in the service archives, www.davelander.com slash archives, which I'll work to get updated if possible on Friday maybe over the weekend, worst case. Anyway, if you go in and look at the, go back to maybe the beginning of November, late October, whatever, and even further back, you can look at, a lot, look at a lot of the setups that are recommended. I'm sorry, you could look at a lot of the setups in the Landry list that were not recommended because I didn't recommend a whole lot of stocks. The two or three that I did did not trigger up until SGML, of course. And if you look at those, especially like on the short side, they triggered and they look pretty good. And maybe you could have squeezed out a swing trade profit, but eh, it's 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 dicey. But in a lot of cases, they've, they've gone straight back up. And if memory serves, maybe going a little further back, some of the longs that made it to my Landry list, the Landry list is my call list that I actually trade off of. And if there's anything that's worth making quote unquote official, I'll recommend it as an official setup like I did with the SGML, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. But anyway, I think if you go look at those recent archives, you'll see that, especially on the days where I didn't recommend anything, and even the ones I recommended, it didn't trigger, right? But it does fail miserably. So you'll see a lot of the setups fail miserably, but no capital was put in harm's way because it just was a market, and a little of, the, a little of this is feel, but, but if you go through a couple thousand stocks a night, like tonight, I think I found five, to put onto my momentum list out of 2000. I think last night I found one. And I only have about, I cleaned it up recently. So I only have about 60 stocks altogether on my momentum list. And I could probably whittle that down to 
to maybe half that amount. So there's just not a whole lot out there. Now, when things are great, the best setups tend to jump out at you. And most of my time on those nights is spending trying to decide from the best of the best. So I might have two or three that I really like, and I'm like, okay, which one of these three or two out of these three do I like the best that I want to make official setups? Now, getting back to the GME, that was just kind of S to G type of trading, probably FOBO and a little bit of ego when it came to that. And the stock was just going crazy. In fact, and I couldn't find a, a one that wasn't split adjusted, but I seem to remember making trades in the 200s. And I think I just got sucked into this. There was no core methodology setting up. I just, I don't know. I was excited because it was going straight up. And I was doing things like buying calls and uh, sometimes outright stock. Sometimes uh, outright stock would put as a would puts as a protective stop, and then buying calls and doing all kind of crazy stuff with it. But I did not get these huge runs that that this stock made. And so again, this is FOMO and kind of like do as I say, not as I do type of, of situation. I'm here. I'm getting sucked into these flickering ticks and doing something stupid. But you can see this thing went straight up and then it came straight back down. And then it went up again and it came straight back down. And then eventually it took off one more time. So there's really not a whole lot of my stuff in this, maybe over here somewhere, but it doesn't fit the core methodology. So yeah, this is a situation where if you're not lucky enough to be into something like this, for sure, let them fight it out. Now, when it comes to the let them fight them out of the market, we had the end of the world gap down not that long ago. And then we had the mother of all reversals on that same day, mother of all bottoms. It sure felt like a bottom, right? Now, I know one day does not a bottom make, but it was a pretty impressive reversal. And then what happened the following day came back in, like I said last week. And then it became the Aussie man market. Nah, yeah, nah. And in this day in particular, it was kind of like, yeah, nah, as I said last week, and then yeah, and then end of the day, nah. And then if you look at it, well, we did close a percent or two higher on that day, or percent higher at least. So that was a pretty impressive day. And then we had an okay run. So we're back to yeah. We come all the way back in. Nah. We try to rally, you know, back to yeah, and then we implode. And then what happens today? We have the mother of all rallies. Now I am encouraged with the action overall, even though it's all over the place, but it's been all over the place. And if you look at it intraday, it's been especially crazy. And November 4th sticks out in my head. We gapped higher, we came right back in, looked like the mother of all ogres, okay? And what does the market do? It takes out that opening range, right? And you're thinking, okay, I don't want to get too excited. I don't want to get it too early. Oh, took out the opening rage. I think I'm going to short it, right? And so what happens? You go to short it. It goes straight back up. You're like, oh, goodness. Well, maybe it's a gap and go now because it took out the opening range of the gap. So maybe I'll go long and then it implodes, right? So you're thinking, okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll short it. It starts to go down. And then what happens, it just goes sideways, okay? And then it takes off going into the close. So it's just kind of all over the place. And if you think about people behind the bars, okay? These are people trading this stock, and, or this, in this case, it's the overall market. And it's like, everybody has to have stocks, doesn't want them, has to have them, doesn't want them. So it's very psychotic in its action when you see the market getting jerked around and all over the place. And as a trend follower, if I'm trying to follow along during the day, which I shouldn't be doing, by the way, unless conditions are fantastic. And recently, I bumped into somebody who um, I ran into and whatever, who she used to be uh, like the lead trader for a hedge fund that, and they only shorted. And she's actually thinking about coming back into trading. And I'm guessing, since she's such a trader, it would, it would be like day trading and all. And she's actually waiting for the market to start going up before she trades. And, and her forte was shorting, believe it or not. So I thought that was pretty impressive. But anyway, so she's waiting for conditions to improve. 
Now, this morning we had the the question is like, how do you know whether to to go with it or not? Well, we have a big gap like today. Well, it's a damned if you do and damned if you don't situation. So we had the mother of all gaps on the open. The market began to implode. And it looked like it was just going to fall out of bed and close the gap. Then it went straight back up. Then it went sideways a little bit, took off, came back in, and then finally rallied toward the end of the day. Now, in hindsight, it looks pretty obvious. But believe me, if you're watching this thing implode and go straight back up and then have a false breakout and come back in, it looks like it's going to implode right again, you know, second fake out of the fake out. I didn't trade it. I promise I didn't trade it. But you could easily chase your own tail. And I never dreamed we'd be up so big by the end of the day. Now, I backed the chart out a little bit and went to a daily chart. And I thought, like, if you follow the, follow the bouncing ball, even though if you just kind of glance at this, it's like, oh, okay, it looks like we're kind of going sideways and bottomed out. You can see that the market's kind of been all over the place. And this is not a trend follower's dream. And the other thing, too, is if you look at the net net price change, you can go all the way back to like June or July and some of these indices. And on a net net basis, at least, I know there's some zigs and zags in between, but on a net net basis, we haven't gone anywhere. And you'll notice that I sat on my hands a lot with the trading service. Now, one thing I'm thinking about, I don't want to, I think it's a little, um, uh, I digress, but one thing I was thinking about right as it was going live is, I did the presentation a couple of weeks ago, harbingers of a bottom, and one was like my phone was getting to ring, beginning to ring, and that tells me that these people are finally have lost about 30% of their money, and they're finally starting to throw in the towel. And then I think when you have a huge day like today, coming off the lows like we have been, I think it sort of like puts pressure on those people to get back in, shakes them out, spits them out, and then puts pressure to get back in. Now we can't just make a bottom off one day, but if we could string together a series of good days and start going up, in other words, a trend, then maybe, just maybe we bottomed out. Why am I saying let them find it out so much? Well, the net net price change, like I just said, you can go back months and we haven't uh, changed much. It's been choppy, choppy, choppy. The Landry list, as I just said, a lot of them initially worked, but then had massive reversals. You would have you would have been incredibly frustrated in taking those setups. Maybe one took off here and there, but as a general statement, you would you would have been really a hurt and pup if you'd have taken a lot of those setups. And again, the database is just not producing a lot of clean stocks. The shorts, a lot of them have a lot of support underneath. And the longs are just have a, a lot of the longs, potential longs, I should say, have a lot of overhead supply. Now, the market is trying to find its way while tormenting as many people as possible. That's sort of what I was just allu just alluding to. It's like, okay, my, what do you call that? What's a fancy way of saying it? Empirical research, right? Paying attention to my phone beginning to ring, friends running into me and, and freaking out about the market and, and, and people asking my wife, how's Dave? <laughs> Well, Dave's been a little rough lately, but that's another story. But in general, I can survive a bear market. I can navigate it, right? Less is more. I got to remind myself of that sometime. Anyway, through the, the tormenting process, that will help the market to bottom. But it kind of reminds me of, of what Livermore said. And, and I'm just going to kind of paraphrase and kind of give you the gist of it. But basically, he said, when the market is just kind of all over the place, it's it's building a base for your next venture. Now, I don't know if he meant literally a base or not, but if you shake out the 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 buy and hold who never let go of their stocks, if you shake out some of that crowd, and I'm not happy this is happening. I hope they held through it because if that's if they're if they're buy and hold, let them hold through it, and, and hopefully it'll come back for them. But I'm just saying from a observational standpoint if they're getting shaken out and then maybe coming back in then that's that's healthy for the market but it's 
it's hard sometimes to to keep your wits about you if your head's in a washing machine getting knocked back and forth in the market. Okay, so more questions that came in. This one I'm just gonna basically say it's not my cup of tea. Uh, he says, Steve O'Neill, I think he meant to say William, follow through day. It seems like we had one. Did it get violated or is it valid? I don't know a lot about follow through days. I know I was at, I guess it was still trade hard back then. I was at trade hard headquarters and I forget what we were rolling out or doing, but I was out in Los Angeles and uh, one of the guys there was a, was a William O'Neill nut. And uh, we were in, I guess a computer room or something or a room full of, I forget exactly what. Where, but uh, he comes running in the room, screaming and hollering like he won the lottery. It's a follow through day. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> whatever. But, you know, I, I can't take away anything from him. If he's excited, he's excited. But a follow through day, I don't know exactly the parameters. You can Google it and you'll know more than me. But basically, you're looking for a day that's higher than the net than the previous and on, on like a, I guess, I'm guessing expansion range, expansion of volume. So it's a long window way of saying I don't know. I don't think you should get as excited as this gentleman was. If it is a follow through day, I, I see it as a good sign. Just like that big opening gap we had on, what day was that? I forget. Anyway, that big opening gap reversal just showed you that could be a bottom, but it might not be the bottom. And it is a good, it is a, you know, put a gun to my head and, and, and you know, is that, is that a bottom? Yeah, it's a bottom. I, I can't tell you for sure if it's the bottom, but it certainly is a positive sign. So if we did have a follow through day, then it would certainly be a positive sign. And I'm not a big fan of volume. So that's why I, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting excited about a follow through day. But if it's something that statistically tests out, then by all means, give it a look. Okay. Now, the other question in here, or Landry Light pullback, something that can be used for some of these energy stocks and healthcare stocks that are at or near 52 weeks highs or longer? The quick answer to that is yes, but I'm gonna flesh that out in one second. And then Brian goes on to ask about some, some stocks, which when we get to the live charts, I'll go through those stocks for him. All right, let's take a look at the energy stocks. So energy overall, my one concern with energies, as I've been saying, and this, this chart looks slightly better than the MG group that I usually show in my trading service and which we'll look at in a few minutes, but we've just made it back to the old highs. And when you have a big sell off from high levels and then the market comes all the way back, as I've said a thousand times, the market's already overbought and sometimes it's hard to sustain that rally. So I'm not super excited about the way they look overall. Although I will, I will say this, energies look better than all the other sectors. Now, the only thing I would throw out there is usually when you have a bull market after a bear market, the old leaders don't become the new leaders, okay? But maybe since we haven't started a new bull market officially, maybe the old leaders will be continue to be the leaders for a while. We'll see. The reason I said that, and the point I'm trying to make there is when the stocks at lower levels begin to rally, the institutions or people who have these stocks that have been doing well might sell those stocks and do a little bottom picking or bottom fishing, or they'll do a little value picking or whatever. As I've said before, um, value becomes momentum sometimes and momentum becomes value so that's just kind of a big picture cycle that unfolds over time now i grabbed a couple of stocks that were trending pretty pretty well and this is one i've been watching for a while here's a 20 ema remember landry light you have you need i think 20 bars i forget the exact number but the point I want to make tonight is that that doesn't matter. 
because I normally use a blank chart anyway. The, the, the great thing about Landry Light is it does help you to quantify things, but I wouldn't trade that pattern just in and of itself, unless you're new to trading and that's all you're going to trade, then by all means, knock yourself out. But you still want to learn how to recognize the best of the best of those patterns. The original setup did use the 20 EMA, but I put the 30 EMA in here too, because that's something that I've been using quite a bit to give you a little bit of a reference. Now, in this case, this stock is going straight up and had a tremendous run. It's got an HV, as you can see over here. This is HV, by the way, of 109. That's that's pretty ludicrous. Even ludicrous would say that's ludicrous, almost ludicrous at least. So I'm concerned that that would not be enough pullback at the 20. So maybe it would take as far as the 30. So don't trade these setups mechanically. Do use your brain and do study the charts underneath the moving averages. Now, nine is another one that's kind of going straight up in here. And in this case, it will know it when we see it, like Justice Potter Stewart, I believe. We'll know it when we see it. But this might actually be too deep of a pullback in this case. So it's a great little pattern to use, but there are other patterns I'd like to use in addition to it. I think that's the point I'm trying to get to tonight. Now, XOM is actually set up. I'm not a huge fan of these big, huge, thick stocks, although every now and then they can offer some great setups and they can trend, but they're less likely to make an efficient move than like those two thinner ones I just showed you, right? So in this case, it is a 20 EMA pullback. It is a Landry Light pullback, or what is it? Uh, Kiss my goodbye, or Landry Light pullback. But it could use a little, maybe a little bit deeper. The only problem is if it goes a little deeper, then it's gonna put it back below its breakout levels. So you might wanna pass on that one. So I just wanna throw out a few of these to kinda show you some things that I look at in addition to the setup. So this one looks pretty good. And again, we'll know when we see it. Let's see what happens on the pullback. This stock is a, it does chop around a little bit, but you can see that it's kind of gotten its act together and has been trending as of late and it has been accelerating as of late. And I'm gonna talk about those concepts in one second. But this would be a strong maybe. And it's got a it's got a shit ton of volume, so you could definitely go in and trade that. Okay. So George was asking, can you explain the importance of persistency and how much of a factor it is when looking at charts? Well, that's that's kind of, I was trying to think of some sort of figure of speech to kind of answer answer that. It's it's kind of like saying, how important is the liver? Well, the liver is very important, <laughs> you know, it, but so are your lungs and, and so is your heart and everything else. So it's just a contributing factor. But yeah, I think that it's one of the most important factors when it comes to looking at charts, or one of the more important factors. So how important is it? Well, ideally you want to see it like in that prior chart I just showed, it really didn't have a whole lot, but the chart still looked pretty good nonetheless. Now, I just put this in last minute. You you want to look for what I call the, the trend qualifiers, and it's not necessarily a trend quantifier, and I made the mistake of putting too much emphasis on ADX, I think in my first book, and I don't actually use ADX. Back then, I was encouraged to give them some sort of benchmark, so to speak, that they could use, or some sort of gauge to help them find trending stocks. But I've always looked at the charts, and when asked what I'm looking for, there are certain things I'm looking for, like obviously Landry Light with moving averages, Bowtie Proper Order, which is not listed in here, the net net price move. Where are we now? Where were we? Okay. Gaps and laps with the trend. And you certainly don't want a gap against a setup. Occasionally, you will have some gaps in a commodity related stock. And that's just the way it goes. And I'm willing to kind of overlook it, look those, especially like gold 
to a somewhat lesser extent, extent oil. You want persistency, as George pointed out, so he's on to something there. Acceleration, the ability for it to trade cleanly and wide range bars with the trend. And there's a bunch of other ones such as strong closes, meaning that's within the trend, if you're eyeballing it, it tends to close towards the top of its range, like it did back here, like it did here, up towards the top of its range for the most part, okay? Now you can see way back when, way back last August, this stock had pretty good persistency. I don't remember what's going on way over here in a chart, but it does look pretty interesting back then. And you can see in more recent times, it's had really good persistency. So I think if you were somewhat newer to trading, then maybe make persistency one of the qualifications you need in a stock. If you've been trading for a while, like that stock a couple back that didn't have a tremendous amount of tr uh, persistency, maybe some longer term persistency, and maybe kind of maybe a little wide and loose around the mean a little, then by all means. But yeah, it you know, initially I went into this thing saying it's 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 as important as everything else, but the more I think about it, maybe it's slightly more important than some of these other concepts. Uh next to maybe net net. Now the other thing I'm seeing here as far as like the trend qualifiers, you can see that you have acceleration of trend. The stock was kind of slowly working its way higher. Then it began to sell then it began to accelerate and of course pull back. And then don't forget to draw your big blue arrow. Maybe the big blue arrow is the most important thing, right? Yeah, let, let me go on record to say a big blue arrow, persistency would be really nice. Ability to take, trade cleanly would be nice too. The beauty of persistency is that if it's almost impossible to have a chart with a lot of persistency that's wide and loose, you know? So maybe maybe some of the new guys and girls that are that are coming in like the Facebook group and you're trying to figure out stock picking, maybe make that one of your qualifications and, and that's gonna help you eliminate a lot of stocks. And if it doesn't have it, if you still like it, then by all means, put it in a group and, and let's noodle with it a little bit. But I'm just thinking out loud and that might be one little concept that can help keep you out of a lot of trouble and keep you out of a lot of choppy stocks. And you know, maybe if you don't walk away from any with anything, that might be something good to uh, consider. Okay. George says charts rule. Yeah, man. <laughs> I want to party with you, George. <laughs> we can look at some charts together, man. Okay, Craig says we've returned to quote unquote normal intermarket analysis. The market today followed the dollar. Well, the dollar went down and the market went out. We'll take a look at that in one second. The dollar is now in bow tie proper order, as I posted a little while ago, the week of chart. So you say a tick for tick, uh, they were completely inverse. And yeah, yeah, good point, Craig. One point I'm often making is that in a market technical analysis, you should learn it. But it only works when it works. And when those relationships are working, then by all means, pay attention to them, okay? So like right now, there's an inverse relationship between a dollar and stocks. And that's normally between a dollar and commodities. I guess it would make sense to be an inverse relationship between dollars, I mean, uh, with dollars and, and stocks because the stocks are sort of a commodity, so to speak, if you think about it, okay? So yeah, dollar with the commodities, as I often say, it's because if the dollar goes down, it's gonna take more dollars to buy commodities, right? If the dollar goes up, the dollar's gonna be strong. So you could you could you could buy more commodities with the stronger dollars. You won't need as many dollars, is what I'm trying to say to buy those commodities. But yeah, in a market, technical analysis only matters when it matters. Okay. Let's uh database not saying bye. You're correct, George. Above base. You rock. Oh well, thank you. Thanks. My new view T O A T. What's that mean, George? My new view tote. All right, now I'm gonna show you something a guru has never shown in a presentation. 
and that would be a losing trade. So I did mention that I was eyeing this Tidewater TDW trade, and I ended up taking it as an opening gap reversal, and it failed miserably, but fortunately, I had a stop in place. Now, I notice in hindsight, and I said the hindsight with a question mark, because so I'm going to show you something in one second, that the gap was too small. Really, it really wasn't like a huge opening gap reversal. It would have shaken a lot of people. And it really didn't gap too much below the prior day's low. So you've got a bar that comes down. And you really want to see a gap that's significant, okay, and not like close to this bar because you, you've got that trading in here. You want a bit of a vacuum in the trading. So you want that stock to not only gap down significantly, okay, maybe like 10%, but you also, margin call, shouldn't be getting margin calls at night. How many times I tell you not to call me? <laughs> but anyway, you want that gap to be significantly lower below that prior day's low because you want as many people trapped on the wrong side of market as possible. Sorry about that. You made me feel better, George. Yeah, you know, shit happens sometimes twice. So I, was, <laughs> I think I said this before. I, I knocked something down in the in the uh or my wife knocked out something down. I forget the store. And we were checking out, and there was a lady behind me, probably a biscuit shy of 350. <laughs> and I said, shit, that shit happens. And she said, sometimes, twice. So every time I'm trading, I think about that. Um, the pullback was not deep enough, okay, in hindsight, or maybe not hindsight. Anyway, as you can tell, I'm questioning the hindsight on this. Well, a lot of it really wasn't in hindsight. Pay attention to your internal dialogue and external dialogue. So you could see, I pointed out that it was a potential overdeveloping, and then I got stopped into it. And then at this point, I said, it's bothering me that I'm more close to the meh than F, yeah. And one thing I woke up thinking about a few days ago, I know the stuff that I wake up thinking about has changed, <laughs> is some sort of monitoring of your emotions. And I'll flesh this out as I kind of build upon it. And you guys were asking me if it was some sort of automated thing. I'm like, no, 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 no. It would be more like, where would you, how would you rate this trade, okay? Like F yeah. Now F yeah means if this thing doesn't work, you're like, well, so what? You might drop an F bomb, but then you tell yourself, if I saw the same trade 10 minutes from now, I would take it. No questions asked. And anything less than an F yeah trade, you probably shouldn't take. And here I am going, you know, I'm bothered that this, this thing is more meh than F yeah. And it kind of reminds me of the foresight you might have but not realize it until it's in hindsight and it kind of a this goes a little bit off on a tangent but it reminds me of my friend who bought a stock and then it dropped and he bought some more and it dropped and he bought some more and he kept doing this and i drew a big blue arrow on the chart and i said it's in an obvious downtrend and he says, well, that's in hindsight. I said, well, wait a minute. You, I'll give you your first buy, okay? And I think it was in a downtrend. I'm pretty sure it was a downtrend then. You could connect the dots lower, right, on a net-net basis. But I said, from here to your next buy, to your next buy, to your next buy, to your next buy. We connect all those dots. And I drew a big blue arrow. I mean, and I think it pissed him off a little, but maybe he learned a valuable lesson from that, okay? But my... Uh, the only thing that seems to work is tough love. Poor George. He's he's hung around. I beat him up so bad. And I asked for permission too. It's like <laughs> thought he was like the guy with the bear hunter, that the bear bear hunter where the bear kept having his way with him. But no, it's like he uh he he took a beating and, and now he's he's getting better and better in his stock picking. I'm proud of him. But anyway, you have to be willing to separate yourself. And one of my little meters is like 
or you're in a drawdown, or you're printing money, and both could be dangerous, okay? Right now, with the intraday stuff, I've been in a drawdown. I got whacked yesterday on the position trades, as my clients did too, but fortunately, that came back a little today. But on other stuff that I've been trying to do in this choppy mess, I've been in a drawdown, so I have a bad case of intuition, which is Sakota, which I'm going to say in a few minutes again. I thought I'd make it through a whole webinar without saying it, but not tonight. Huh? And trying to make something happen. So the, the, the worse you are on both ends of the spectrum, and that's one thing that I'm trying to figure out in my mind with, with, this, with this trade, the trade on meter for the setup, and I need to come up with another name for that because that's been taken, but with the trade on meter for setup, it's either like over here full, and that's what you want to do, the F yeah, or meh, over here somewhere. If anything less than an F, yeah, you don't want to trade. But in some cases, the you want to be maybe somewhere in the middle to be on an even keel psychologically. Because if you've just been printing money, you're very likely to piss some away. Now, I don't want to go off into that deep tangent there, but that's kind of like the reverse endowment effect, because the endowment effect is. Once you let's say you own a stock for a while, you you it's like you don't want to get rid of it because you you fall in love with it or whatever. Like I'm gonna be sad when I have to get rid of ARLP because we've been in it forever and it's been really good for us and it's just a good warm and fuzzy up until yesterday to come in and see it go up a little bit each day and collect a dividend every now and then. But if you if you're kind of lottery rich, you tend to piss it away. And this is something I've been working on quite a bit in a lot of my writings, which eventually will come out in these webinars and stuff. I, by accident, I got a book on, it, it was called um, Money for Nothing or something. I got it by accident, ordered the wrong book or something, or it sent me the wrong book. But anyway, I read it anyway. And uh, don't read the book. You know, I don't want to, my apologies to the author. It was pretty depressing. Basically, the guy rode around the country and he would buy out these people's annuities from lotteries who, who have gone completely bust on that. And so he's gonna give them a lump sum. And I'd be willing to bet the Paul Harvey rest of the story there is they're gonna blow that lump sum too. Because this found money is easily blown. Okay. They haven't they haven't made it theirs yet they it hasn't become i don't know if the word is endowed but the reverse endowment effect or the endowment effect hasn't taken hold and they say the best thing to do obviously if you win the lottery is to sit on the money for six months get used to having that money anyway so the more things that are happening in your life and i'm going to show you all my little meters i'm working on and your health and all these other stuff, things, your sleep and your personal well-being, and of course your recent trading can put you into a mode of intuition, which is Ed Zakota, which I use quite often as opposed to intuition. And if you could detach yourself, and what's the word for that? Clinically dispassionate. Larry Witten says a wonderful quote. I wish I could remember it word for word, but basically he said, you have to be clinically dispassionate. You have to not care. The more you care, the more you lose. It's a little counterintuitive. But if you could detach yourself and say, well, hang on, how big was that gap? Was that gap big enough? Now, there always won't be things you can look back at and say, oh, I should have seen that. And in that case, hopefully that was a trade that was an F yeah trade and you would take it again tomorrow, right? Or later today. But the more you can be detached, the easier it is to see that foresight in hindsight. And that's why it's so easy for me when you guys post a chart, I can immediately snap back and say, oh man, it's wide and loose or it's this or it's that or it's this or that. But if I was looking at that chart and was thinking about getting into it, I might have a little bit of a per perceptual distortion or selective perception, however you want to look at it, based on what's going on in my life and my trading. So I know there's a whole psychology here I'm just scratching the surface on. A lot of these concepts I've already discussed. 
But I think the more you can detach yourself, the better off you will be. And I think this is just a wonderful example of me actually admitting that it was a mediocre setup, okay? I should feel F yeah going in and oh well F it if I get stopped out, right? But instead I was like, meh. And then when I get stopped out, how do I feel? Well, I feel even worse because I shouldn't take it, I shouldn't take it anyway. So I've kind of like piled on a bunch of negative emotions to myself. And as we were discussing earlier today in Facebook, last week at Bandcamp, right? A negative emotion has twice the impact of a positive one. And that's one of the dangers just to put it in context of what we were talking about in Facebook is somebody got into a stock and they got the high tick for the day, which we all get that prize every now and then, you know, shit happens, right? But it's a position trade. So if they should be in, they should be in and they're not stopped out, they're not stopped out. I know, easier said than done. But the more clinically dispassionate you could be, like Larry Williams says, the better off you are. F, yes, blue arrow. Hey, I hear you, buddy. You're riding your bike right now? <laughs> Be careful. You ride a mountain bike or a real bike, George? I got a pretty awesome mountain bike. Better ride on the street. All right, let's hop into any questions on anything we've uh, talked about. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like those those ass hatchets. <laughs> yeah, that's painful. I've got a mountain bike that I've um, somebody had tricked it out before me, and then I've um, I went ahead and made it more street worthy because I'm not going to go ride down a mountain. Louisiana is pretty flat, by the way. All right, let's uh, let's go to uh, trading view real quick. Let's take a look at crypto, and then uh, yeah, keep the stock picks coming, and we'll take a look at those. Okay. Well, I meant to go to crypto. Crap. Talk amongst yourselves. Here we go. There we go. All right, everybody should be seeing crypto. All right, let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin's pretty fascinating. You know, here's a case of believe in what you see and not in what you believe. I've been kind of a bull on Bitcoin a little bit, confusing the issue with facts, I know. And I have a little bit hodl, not a, not enough to beat me over the head with a five dollar wrench, believe me. But you can see that Bitcoin kind of imploded. Now I don't know the exact reasoning. I know that FTX is in a, a lot of trouble. That's one of the exchanges, as I said from day one. Okay, I trust these. Crypto exchanges about as far as I could throw them. I told somebody a while back how much money I had in one base in the Seychelles. And it wasn't that much money. And he was like, holy crap. <laughs> he thought I was crazy. And I'm like, it's not that much money. I mean, it's enough to where I'd be pissed off. It's enough to where I wouldn't tell my wife if they blew up. But it's not enough to sink me. But yeah, be careful. Tread lightly. Uh, keep it mostly U.S. based. The problem with this... Seychelles base one is uh they've got like every coin in the world. Had, these are all the coins that I put in. I updated my list just the other day. I left out all the cross pairs because I don't see no reason to work on those. Anyway, uh Bitcoin not doing so hot. We did have that Landry light, uh, I'm sorry, the daylight or what do you call it? Two two thirty EMA back here, which probably would have triggered you in and then failed miserably. So that one didn't work. So I'm, I've done two things a guru has never showed you. Showed you two failed setups in one night, right? But what's interesting about Bitcoin is I didn't think, it seems like it always found support down here. It never would take that support out. Not that you want to bottom fish. I'd never recommend doing that, but it sure seemed like that was kind of a line in the sand. Like it wasn't going to take that out, like 18 or so round numbers, but it did. Okay. So believe in what you see and not in what you believe. Let's take a look at a weekly here. You guys are going to look at any of these pairs real quick. I'll just show you a couple of things real quick and then we'll, we'll get out of here. So we are tailing off those worst levels that we had. 
So maybe just maybe we'll survive because we didn't take out that by much, but I think it was enough to wake up a lot of people. But look at that weekly Landry light. I uh, actually worked on a little tiny Elvis today, so we're gonna bring tiny Elvis back. <laughs> Thanks for one of you guys. Look, look at that Landry light, it's huge. Some of these Elon coins and Shibas woke up a little bit based on Twitter being bought out, which I have no I have no idea why that would happen as far as these coins rallying. I know why Twitter got bought out. At least I think. Anyway, um, let's take a look at Ethereum. And uh, my charts are all messed up here, but Anybody know how to just get this back when it does this quickly? But you can see it's, Ethereum broke down too. And, you know, look at what Ethereum did. It took out this big fat base. So that's a little, that's a little troublesome. Just a year ago, these things were on fire. Here's FTT, which is the FTX token. And uh, not looking so good there. But you know why? Why would you be? And I don't want to pour salt in anybody's wounds. I, I know you guys are not in it, but let's say you're a trend follower. Why would you be in it? Okay, you had a, maybe you took a signal back here. You might have made a little money, then you got stopped out. So be it. You shouldn't be in something like this when it's at or near new lows, and certainly heading heading lower. As I often say, it's always darkest right before it gets more dark how's the micro uh, how's the how's the uh, how's the biker he's in uh he's in china huh he's biking in china that's cool yeah i haven't been on a bike in a while i have uh we have adult trikes <laughs> with led lights we we went on one too many pub crawls and it ended badly so we decided to get trikes for that but uh yeah i hadn't been on a bike in a while my wife has an injury and she hadn't been able to bike but I don't do real biking like you guys. I just do like 20 miles when I when I get on. All right, let's, uh, I don't think there's anything. Let me just take a quick scan here. When crypto is blowing and going, and it's not blowing and going right now, you could just sometimes just sort by relative strength. And, and you know, one thing that I'm thinking is because crypto is improving recently, if this Bitcoin doesn't hang in there and, also, if this FTX thing has some ripples through the system, one has to wonder if it's going to do a little longer term damage to some of these things. I, don't, I think that was a stock. Anyway, nothing really to get excited about in crypto. All right, let's pop back over to stocks and then um, we'll take a quick look at the markets. And then we'll look at your individual stock picks. All right, P's really took off today, obviously. Look at that, uh, 5.5%, that's huge, okay? And I'm sure it was on huge volume, and I'm guessing, I know there's a few other caveats, but I know it took out some highs, huge volume. So I think if I had to guess, that's probably a follow-through day. I don't know, if one of you guys is into O'Neill, let me know. O'Neill kind of cut my teeth with O'Neill. I um, was a big fan of his first book, which uh, the cancel him stuff, which got me into technical analysis. And then um, I just got rid of the fundamentals. And then in, in, the, in the late 90s, it's interesting, they began changing their model a little bit. So to accommodate the crappy fundamentals you know george says you make me feel better yeah you know we're all we're <laughs> it's a tough business i don't want to make it look like it's easy i actually saw some youtube guru make it look easy and it actually bummed me out a little bit but you know you got to watch those guys this one in particular Ugh. anyway nice gap higher nice follow through from the gap right and you can see we took out the recent high in here the net net thing I was talking about, like just yesterday, right? You can go all the way back to June and you can see we hadn't moved around a lot, but one date is not a trend to make, but it is encouraging. We had that mother of all reversals. We were all over the place, but in general, I guess on a net net basis worked our way higher. 
And now we have one day of Landry light above the 50 day moving average. Let's take a look at the bow ties here. I don't know if we're in bow tie proper order just yet, but we're close. So that'll be there. See my YouTube channel for more on bow tie proper order. I just did a, a what do you call this thing? It's shorts on that. All right, take a look at this NASDAQ. Look at that rally, it's huge, okay? Seven and a third percent. Very impressive. Okay, you wanna go back to the SPY real quick? We can do that. SPY. Okay, just draw a channel on the SPY from January of this year, and it still does not look good. It'll have to go to minus four, to around 405 to get to the top of the channel. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm not a huge fan of like a channel, but I hear you. And a weekly chart will probably show what you're saying. I do pay attention to the falling tops, okay? And this is where you want to look at stuff like, and I don't make them perfect, okay? Just kind of eyeball them, kind of line them up a little. I mean, you could you could do this if you wanted. But yeah, on a weekly chart, I hear you. Good point, okay? So his point is, and this is, uh, who was that, Jeff? that we're in a channel, somewhat of a channel at least, but yeah, for sure. And then if you're following a TFM 10% system, you're gonna need two lows above this moving average. So I think you I think you said 415. So yeah, we'd have to get to like 415 before this market would start to look like you wanna get back in on a longer term basis. Right now, right now, not so much, huh? It's still pretty ugly. I, I agree, good point. And, uh, Point taken for sure there. All right, NASDAQ Composites was up 7% and change today, all the way back above the 50. And like Jeff was saying, eh, probably not so hot. In fact, it's a little bit cleaner if you wanted to do your line studies or whatever, connect the highs. We still have falling highs, okay? Not a huge fan of trend lines, except if it's a trend line drawn through the market for your consistency. But trend lines can help you to see that falling top, falling top, okay? And if we don't get above this trend line and go back down, then we have another falling top. So yeah, it's a little too early to start kissing each other just yet. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm close to too many analysts now and traders, but it seems like everybody got kind of bullish a little fast. I think they're right, but early. Take a look at that Rusty. Look at that Rusty, it's huge too, up 6%. Now Rusty looks more like a bottom, a little wide and loose, I'll give you that, but looks more like a bottom than the other indices. Let's take a look at the bow ties. Yeah, we're in uptrend proper order here, okay? We did have a little throwback down, but for the most part, this is kind of a bow tie and now we're in uptrend proper order. So that certainly is a good thing. Now, here's what's interesting. Gold is waking up a little bit. And it's so funny because all the stuff they put on the radio and TV about why gold should be going up as it went straight down, just the opposite of everything they're saying, pretty much everything, is happening now. And what's gold doing? It's going up. Isn't that crazy? Or isn't that ironic, don't you think? Show my age now, huh? <laughs> Here's GBCT, which is the proxy, somewhat of a proxy for Bitcoin, not a perfect one, but you can't get exposure through this. I would I would caution you not to use the futures, BITO and BT, B-I-T-I, unless you're doing a day trade because you're going to be up against Contango there, if that's how you say it. Energies pull back a little bit, like the energies we were looking at earlier, kind of right at the prior peak in here. They look good, don't get me wrong. I would just like to see them break out and not look back. As one of you guys pointed out, I think it was Craig earlier, yes, metals and mining are acting as they should, doing a little intermarket analysis with the dollar imploding. Look at the dollar, okay? Now, believe it or not, kind of bow tie crazy tonight, the dollar is now in downtrend proper order. Okay, it's just one day, but downtrend proper order, 
nonetheless, and it's been an uptrend proper order forever. I've, I've got a chart on Facebook that has a little histogram thing at the bottom, which is kind of interesting. I know you don't party with me. It's okay. George and I are going to party because George says charts rule. I agree, George. Well, what, what does Greg say? All the economic theories and fundamentals in the world aren't any better than what price will allow. And I often say fundamentals are held hostage by price, fundamentals and facts and stuff. Look at the transports. They've been going kind of straight up in here. Pretty impressive. Kind of wide and loose and all over the place, but pushing higher, at least shorter term nonetheless. Some of these areas like software, which just have been looking really horrible. Had a bang up day today. Look at that, 7.5% plus. Little Landry light there, so that's improving. But here's the bottom line. is great as some of these things look today it's it's going to have to follow through and and you know maybe maybe i take that back about what i said with trend lines because as i said earlier we'll help you to see the falling tops and lest i get too excited about this huge day we had today i'm i'm happy that the market went up i just went up i'm hoping that it keeps going up okay much easier to trade a bull market than a bear market and as I've learned over the years with the bear market, a lot of times you're better off just sitting on your hands. And that's why if you hired me recently this year for the most of it, except early in the year, we were shorting a little bit. For most of the time, I've been telling you sit on your hands. And if you don't believe me that that's a good thing to do, like I said, go in and look at those stocks that would have absolutely killed you had you tried to trade them. So HLIT is on my lander list tonight, but we'll talk about it. It looks okay, all right? At first glance, it looks fantastic, and that's why I made the Landry list. But the more I look at it, it looks like it's, I, I don't like the way it kind of, and this is, as I said to my clients tonight, this is hard to explain because it's such, it's such a textbook looking setup, right? And I know, it's, I know you could argue that, well, from here to here it accelerated, but it did have this drift in here. And I don't know, it's retraced, from where it drifts, there's, I just there's something I don't like about it, but there's nothing wrong with it. So that's I don't know how to explain it. Maybe because it's retraced this last little run it made completely. I don't know, but I could cert I certainly wouldn't fault anyone who's trading a trend following methodology or a methodology like mine who took this trade. Okay, so I'll give you a I'll give you a, an okay. <laughs> George says, I thank you for being real. Yeah, poor George. Trend kind of went sideways for the ogre. Yeah, you talk about Tidewater? Yeah, a little bit. I agree. Yeah, we got a we got a lot of bikers in the group. Cyclist. All right, George was talking about CTVA, and I got a lot of write-ins to cover too. So let me start working on those. CTVA. Uh no, it's not set up yet. And you know, this is kind of wide and loose, okay? Jackie Mason stock up, down, up, down, or Ozzy Man, yeah, nah, yeah, nah. And I hear you, it broke out of the base and it's only got an HV of 31, which is a little bit on the light side. Usually when I, my scans get to 30, I kind of speed up and just kind of go through them real quick because usually there's nothing between 35 and 25 that I'm not excited about. So yeah, I think there's something better out there than this it looks okay it's trending it's broken out it's not set up but put it on your list but i wouldn't buy it just yet ftd ftd all the day was back in october okay thank you lance you know what day that was was that the was that that mother of all days you know maybe maybe there is something to that so that day October 13th. Okay. Or was it October 13th, Lance? Well, that's kind of cool because I, like I said, I it's a bottom. I don't know if it's the bottom, but that's kind of cool. I wouldn't bet my life on that being the bottom. I think that's what I was trying to say earlier. Moving average since like 4:30. Okay. Uh, CAH. And I had a slide, but I, but I lost it last minute. Somebody was asking me what I thought about all the healthcare stocks. 
the problem with the healthcare sector is it could be technically it could be biotech drugs. It depends on what index you're looking at. But it could be biotech, it could be drugs. So I would divide it up into the subsector if you're looking for some sector confirmation there. So yeah, Cardo Health, it looks okay. It needs a little bit more knockout, but yeah, it's okay. Cause you do have a nice little base in here, okay? George, you you showed me one that had a wide and loose base. Notice this base is a little bit tighter, okay? And when it does trade, look at that persistency, okay? There's your persistency. Easy for me to say, persistency. So yeah, deeper pullback, maybe, okay, on that one. But yeah, put it on, put it on your list for sure. BSM, a right in. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, it is a mining stock or no energy stock, so it does have a gap down. A little concerning there. Um, it's almost pulled back all the way to where it's broken out. So maybe look through your other energies and see if there's something else you like better. But it's not bad. I, I'll give it a pass with this gap here. It's okay. I think you can maybe do better in energies. The gap has bothered me a little bit. I know I said I don't care about gaps in, in as much in energy stocks, but it is kind of bothered me a little bit. So yeah, see what else is out there. It's not horrible though. It's not horrible. Uh, you know, maybe maybe you could get in above that wide range bar, but in that case, you're getting in a little close to the to the peak, and you're not getting that reversion to the mean move. So yeah, see what else is out there. COP we already covered. I think it's going to be a big thick stock. And it's okay. It just really hadn't gotten too far past that prior peak. Kind of has that that problem that the energies have where they're kind of already oversold, overbought. Uh, maybe try to find something a little bit cleaner in energies. Do didn't really get past the prior peak in here, so I would pass on that one. Uh, keep it on your momentum list for sure. LPG looks okay. If you were just looking at these, I'm guessing this is a liquid petroleum stock. If you're just looking at this run here and this pullback, it looks pretty good. Could actually be a little bit deeper, but it is kind of wide and loose longer term as these these petroleum um, liquid natural gas stocks. If that's what that what that is, maybe not. But I mean, it's okay. But I don't like the fact that it really didn't get too past these pro too far past these prior peaks in here. I like something that that's more momentum looking, like KLXE. Something like that is kind of more exciting than than those other ones. Okay, and HNRG for Lance. Yeah, there's an energy stock, but you know, really didn't get past the prior peaks. It's already come back in. So it's kind of got that wide and loose movement. So pass on that one. RVPH, RVPH. Yeah, that looks good. That looks pretty good. Uh, they could use a little more pullback. It's got some issues longer term. Yeah, I would probably pass based on its longer term issues. It has kind of gotten its act together in more recent times. It does look pretty good if you kind of draw, you know, there's your persistency, there's your persistency, thrust, pullback, thrust, you know, maybe a little bit deeper pullback. I think it'd be okay. I'm kind of a, kind of have problems with this longer term issues. If it didn't have this, trading in here, this wide range bar now. Uh, I'm gonna give that a possible, cause I guess if it got all the way up to seven and change, you'd be doing okay on that trade percentage wise at least. So I'll give it an okay, but a little deeper pullback. I've been trading OR since high nines and FNV since 120. They are, as I noted, related to US dollar. So possible dollar strength bounces. Okay, OR. Which is a gold stock. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing for me there. It's too wide and loose and all that resistance. But I hear you if you have a, a way of doing that, FNV, you know, the gold stock it, against the dollar. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's, I think it's a tough way to trade, but I hear you. You know, it's almost like, okay, you do intermarket analysis. I'm going to trade this market because this market is doing, going up or whatever. Then it's almost like, would you be better off just buying this market? Okay, I don't know. Or maybe something a little closer to the to the trade, like shorting the euro or something. I don't know. But I hear you on that. 
Nas violated the first for us today, but Spy and Dow are valid. Thank you, Lance. Okay. So whoever was asked about the first thrust day, spy and Dow first thrust days. Okay, CRBG, CRBG. Yeah, this one was kind of interesting. I kind of hated that it pulled back into its prior little breakouts. But as you know, IPOs, if you just buy them when they're making new closing highs with a few caveats, as I preach, it'll it tends to test out or you certainly catch a few one few really nice moves so uh this would have to break out and then pull back this is on my watch list but it, it's gonna have to keep on keeping on and then pull back to get excited yeah i would treat more instead of a he call it a first thrust it's somewhat of a first thrust but it's more of a ipo related patterns Lance says, I hate gold. Well, gold's a tough market. It really is. And, you know, gold, I think gold's like Bitcoin. All the gold in the world would fit in my backyard. And I have a little bitty backyard. I used to have six acres, but right now I have a little bitty backyard and all the gold in the world, I think, y'all might want to Google that, would fit in my backyard. Well, if that's, that's the case, then there's certainly not enough gold to go around, right? So, how does everybody trade the gold? You know, there's just not enough to go around. It's just like um, crude oil contracts. There's not as, there's not a gallon or a gallon of crude or whatever it is, a barrel of crude behind every contract or, or fifty thousand, whatever the barrels are. I forget. It's been a while since I traded crude, but. You have GLD, okay, well, this is supposed to be gold, right? Does this actually have gold backing? I don't know. I used to do, I knew a guy who was part of the, what's the Canadian gold fund that had real gold? And I asked him, I said, would you put a bag over my head and spin me around a dozen times, ride me around for a couple hours, take a bunch of turns, and then take me down into the, the vault and pull the bag off my head so I could see the gold? And he said, not in a million years. <laughs> it's like, okay. That was Ian McCaffrey. He's no longer with us. Lance says, fits in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Well, my yard ain't that big because we, we went to put a pool in and it wasn't going to be that big. Yeah, that seems, it's more than I thought it would be. But even still, it's not that much, right? Copper, I can't pull it up on the fly, George. You have a symbol? CP, uh, this is copper, this is MG copper. Yeah, MG copper group looks pretty good. So yeah, you know, keep an eye on copper stocks. There might be some that's uh, worthwhile. <laughs> I was trained by a Canadian that explained that miners are a liar on top of a hole in the ground. Yeah. And and these gold companies are or and that's the other thing too. There's all kinds of philosophical arguments that maybe aren't that philosophical. Is uh these gold companies are really looking to unload that gold, you know? <laughs> and that's the thing. So the price starts going up, the supply just mag magically comes on the market. And like Larry Williams said, this they they, they tell you on the radio that gold's going straight up as a silver, but they sure want your dollars for it. CPER, CPER. Yeah, that's doing pretty good. Um, this doesn't sound crazy, but I remember in the 90s, I wanted to create stocks that would trade like commodities. And I didn't follow through on that idea. I guess it would have been hard for an individual to make something like that happen. But yeah, it looks kind of interesting. So copper, copper looks like it's improving for sure. Oh, I just deleted. It was the big Friday after the reversal day. Okay, I just deleted the date. Sorry about that. You have to admit, sooner or later, it's something while crypto is. Question mark. Um. Yeah, for the most part, crypto is nothing. 
I'm all, I almost buy into some of the arguments on on Bitcoin not being completely nothing. Um, a dollar's nothing, right? I've got a lot of uh, currencies laying around my office. Where's my hundred trillion dollar note? This one's I got fifty thousand right here. If anybody wants it. <laughs> um, to create a Bitcoin, I forget the electricity cost. It used to be four thousand dollars. It's probably ten thousand dollars now. So you could argue that it is something, but that's a rabbit hole. You kind of don't want to go down, but there's certainly a lot of paper Bitcoin out there. And uh, unfortunately, you know, the not your keys, not your coins. I think a lot of people are going to find that out with the FTX being the latest debacle there. What's that uh, book? I listened to Digital Gold a while back. It's pretty good for what it's worth. GLD above 160, bad below 160. Kind of a Tarzan, huh? Okay, so Greg said good above 160 and bad below 160. I'm with you on that, buddy. I agree with you, okay? Follow through day was October 21st, okay? All right, let's take a look at that real quick. October 21st, okay. Okay, well, that's good to know. Yeah, I thought it might have been that open again reversal day. So, according to Lance, October 21st. Okay, Craig's a gold bug. He's not a gold bug. No, I'm not a gold bug. Yeah, I was a gold bug for a long time. And uh, I was a silver bug for a while, too. I mean, I was a silver bug as a kid. And then I uh, collected a lot of silver. And then when the Hunt brothers did their thing, I was, I was worth a lot for a kid. <laughs> My, um, grandparents had a cleaners years ago before i was um they had long since retired but they would keep the silver coins that came through i guess when they went off the silver or whatever i think o u o o u n z okay so you're saying that this is a a backed coin that's supposedly actual gold behind this yeah i mean you got storage you got security you got all kinds of issues but I hear you. And, you know, the, the question is, is it really all there? You know, I don't know. I forget the name of the Canadian fund that Ian uh, McActivy started. It's probably CDN. Is it CDN? CDN? Nope. I don't know if he started, but he was part of it. Anyway. I know they were always questioning them whether they had the goal or not. All new bull markets have a follow through day, but not all follow through days start with new bull market. Start a new bull market. Okay, Lance, perfect. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear because, you know, I guess my limited experience with the follow through day was that people tend to drink the Kool Aid, like, and you know, yeah, it's follow through day. You know, come up with the March and ban and shit. You know, <laughs> it's like. It's a good thing, don't get me wrong, but exactly, you know, all just like all opening gap reversals at brand new lows could be a bottom, but or, or you know, whatever. I hear what you're saying. Actually, what you're saying makes a lot more sense. So you say all bull markets have a follow through day, but not all follow through days start a new bull market. And that's the thing with technical analysis is nothing always works and you have to take it with a few caveats well i'm way over time here i want to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight i appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule anything un unanswered we can pick it up in facebook if you're not in facebook shoot me an email davelander.com slash contact and again thanks everybody i'll see all you guys and girls tomorrow on facebook everybody else have a great weekend and may the trend be with you you guys are welcome thank you thank you that's all I can tell you.